Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel where we share safe real estate investment tips, talk about property law and share credible real estate investment opportunities here in Nigeria. Basically, every video on this channel is an asset to real estate investors and property buyers. Finally, on this channel, every subscriber is family, a family of millionaire real estate investors. Welcome. A lot of factors to consider with the issue of prenuptial agreement. And number five, make a will. Learn to make a will. Learn to make a will. Making a will is important. Making a will is important because it also helps you. One of the things, okay, I'll just um, um, run through the importance of making a will in this conversation. Number one, it simplifies and clarifies things. Like I said, all of this conversation is foundation on an uncertain and a very big um, um, rules or principles of law. So with a will or with all of this um, a prenuptial agreement or some of the other joint tenancy um, practice, with all of this, you are able to bring some certainty into the conversation. And you're able to tell the judge at the end of the day, if the matter goes to court, that this is how we wanted it to happen and at this point we crave your indulgence to endorse it and let it happen that way you understand okay so um making a will helps to simplify clarify things and bring some level of certainty number two it saves the woman who does not have a child so there are marriages that that the woman doesn't have a child if she doesn't have a child it creates a very big issue but making a will with, will help her because one of the things that even on our court to tomorrow if a woman doesn't have a child and the husband had property before he died and the woman died the man died rather usually there's there's a big issue with getting letters of administration or making that woman get letters of administration remember the last time we spoke we talked, we talked about a will when a man dies, um, dies tested, it means it means he made a will. If he yeah. didn't make a will, he died intestate. When he makes a will, what applies is um, executors, a probate, and all of that. If he doesn't make a will, what will come into play is letters of administration, which the wife, the children should apply for. But the moment the woman doesn't have a child. The people of the man will most likely, 98% of the times, challenge her application for a probate, for later term administration. And 70% of the times, the family will succeed. So what a will does for you here is that it prevents later transition of to come into place so automatically a will solves and simplifies that all right so this really helps the woman really really helps the woman and and next it protects the mass family too quite sincerely getting married under the statute means that your family as a man are largely eliminated from anything that concerns your wealth oh really yes okay largely they are eliminated largely they are automatically disinherited the family because once the moment you get married the family is no longer my brother my younger brother or my elder brother family is now you your wife and your children so it's important that you also consider that fact that's one of the important that's why i said the importance of making a will one of the importance now is that you could make a will and keep something for your younger brother, your benef your benefactors, people who 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 because if you have a wicked wife and will a bit into her or something, um that also brings an issue. So it's important that you also be humane and consider your people and recognize and give them something because and also that in, in the same context. The same way a man is somewhat eliminated from his people, the wife, the moment you get married to another man statutorily, you are taken away. You no longer, the moment you start, you stop answering your father's surname, is the moment you, you generally no longer have the right to inherit anything from that your former family. Because first you were a daughter, now you are a wife. 
So at this point, you no longer have right to inherit. So for instance, I have three daughters, and the three of them get married. The ordinary are no longer my children because they are not somebody else's wife with another surname. So if I want to still have them at the back of my mind, I mean, give something to them, then I have to use a will in my will to do that. I recently did a transaction that the man willed um, a property that is sold three point five million naira to the daughter. She was married at that time, but if she wasn't married, that would have been an issue. He wouldn't have succeeded in doing that. So it's important that you use a way to simplify. To simplify that, and uh, number six, gift properties with clear terms. It's not just enough to just buy property in the name of your wife. What are the terms of buying that property? Because the moment you buy the property in the name of your wife and leave a, a loophole, then the court brings in the presumption of a gift. The presumption of a gift. And you do not want to do presumptions when you are talking about divorce. You would end up spending up to five years, six years in court. So it's important that when you are gifting your wife a property or buying property in the name of your wife, be clear. Because if she gets married to another man, everything you give to her is hers. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Everything you have given to her when it was sweeting you is hers. So you have to be clear. Um, you, by clarity, you, you could determine for her life. Uh, you can give it to her for life. When she dies, it falls back to you. You can do it that way. You can also give it to her to the point that with the condition that she's continued or she continues to be married to you. The moment she gets married to another person, that gift terminates. So you have to be clear on those terms. And the last, no, the last one, two more, but I cannot share these two here. I cannot okay. share these two very sensitive here. here. <laughs> this one is for special, special, special okay. consultancy. Special, 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 special consultancy. But largely, largely, all of these things I've shared, all of these things I've shared are big time solutions that can prevent issues, um, prevent issues around as far as it concerns getting married or buying properties, having um, experiencing a divorce. Nobody prays for it. Right, nobody prays, but just like nobody prays that um, his, his or her car will get um, experienced a fire incident, but we only have we always have a fire extinguisher in the car, right? Mm -hmm. So, so that that way, in case anything happens, you are able to to get the right thing done. But generally, what you should learn from all of this, what you should learn from all of this, um, the entire conversation we have had is that there are a lot of uncertainties with our laws, but you and your husband. Even the Matrimonial Causes Act itself, the marriage, the act that guides, doesn't specifically give anything to the woman as per matrimonial property. The best it does is that it uses the phrase anti-nausea anti, anti and post-nausea. Yes, that's what it uses. And with that, it, it kind of recognizes the fact that the court, when there's a divorce, the court will fall back to anything that both of you have put together as how you want this thing to be done. So that way, even though the court has a very wide discretion, that way the court also now has something to work with. So in summary, what you should learn to do as husband and wife is learn to always keep something that the court can work with in case anything happens. In fact, both of you can even, the way you have, would have established certain things, you can even do without the court. At that point, in fact, that is even where, okay, for instance, um, part of the things that the courts can offer or, or bring up, bring to the table when you are having a divorce or when a divorce case is going on is terms of settlement. So the woman's lawyer would, would bring a terms of settlement. The man's lawyer would bring a terms of settlement. What happens there is they simply fall back to the contract, the agreement that both of you have had over time. Bring all of these things together and simply just abide by it. The moment you abide by it, you file a terms of or you file your terms of settlement, the man files, um, the both parties come together now to solidify it, file terms of settlement to the court, and the court will simply look at it. Everybody is valid, there's no coercion, everybody is on the same table. You file it in less than one year, you most likely will get your divorce case and you leave yourself the emotional torture and all of that. But of course, we're not praying for divorce to happen, but to happen rather. But this is just as a way of communicating. Um, what can help you in case any of this happen. 
All right. So in conclusion, what I'm trying to say to you, or what I've succeeded in doing is that there are a number of factors that you can consider when issues arise, but you need, um, you can't do it by yourself. You need an expert to do all of that for you. And, and that's it. Thank you. Oh, great. Thank you so much, Barista Raymond. Thank you. Thank you. So when you say own the property jointly, is that talking about um, titling the property? So let's say I and my husband uh, want to buy a property and we, we want to buy it jointly. It doesn't have to do with the way we title, be our name, Mr. and Mrs. Um, Eze, or how do we, does it involve the titling? Titling okay. is the, yes. name, the name on the document. Yes, that is, that is what it involves. But I also need to correct something here um it is very wrong it is wrong 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 to have mr and mrs raymond on a document okay mr and mrs raymond are not and they are not an entity mr and mrs raymond yes they are married statutorily and they are one in the eye of the law but as far as a property transaction is concerned, they have to be separate parties. So it should be Mr. Raymond Ijoma and second party, Mrs. Whoever Ijoma. Okay. Not Mr. and Mrs. Raymond Ijoma. That is a grave error as far as property transaction between a husband and a wife is concerned. Because that Mr. and Mrs. is not one entity. Okay. The, yes. The, the, the issue usually, yes, is, a, is the lawyers, is, is the problem of lawyers. Um, it's the problem of lawyers. I remember I did this transaction that, that um, the husband and wife bought and I did Mr. Who and Mrs. Who put them together and then they were selling the same property and usually i like to educate my clients when whenever i do stuff for them so that they know what i'm doing and they can even have a conversation around what i did and when they were selling the property they reached uh, the, the lawyer to the buyer um did an agreement to summarize the whole story because it's it's, it's longer than this to summarize it the lawyer to the sell, buyer did an agreement he she okay i don't want to generalize it the lawyer saw that i did mr this and mrs this yet she now she did the mr this on top and did mrs this as parties as a matter of fact it pointed to the fact that if she didn't see oh god if the lawyer did not see mr this and mrs this the lawyer would have would have done it together but thankfully she saw the lawyer saw somebody that okay, apparently the lawyer I'm talking about is a she. So let's just get it done. <laughs> so sorry. Right answer, right answer. <laughs> she instead of her to to continue with what I've done, she she the, the front of it she used Mr. This and Mrs. This, and later on at the point of the signing on that she now did Mr. and Mrs. This and used one colon. So at that point, the client reached out to me that, is this not wrong? And I told him that, okay, let them suggest to her. Let them have um, both of them. Because one of the, look at the logic. You have Mr. and Mrs. This. Mr. and Mrs. This, you, at the end of the day, you are going to put one column for signature. Who is going to sign? Is it the man or the wife? Or both of them are going to stand on top of each other? Or is there anything like two people having one signature together? That logically doesn't make any sense. So I suggested to them that, okay, since he has, she has done it that way and she's trying to be stubborn about it, let them sign separately. So she, even though it's one column, the man signs on one side and the lady signs, the woman signs on the other side. And then I was like, no, they are one. The husband should sign at that column and the wife signs as a witness. And I'm no. like, from this transaction, how does a woman who was a transferor, co-owner, automatically become a witness in that transaction? So the question is, is that transfer valid? 
No. 20 years time, that kind of transaction, somebody can wake up tomorrow and say there was no valid or competent transfer between this couple and these other people. And you, 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 you end up finding a uh, wonder why we have a lot of court cases in court or land cases in court rather. So the point is, these people are married, yes. But as far yeah. as that party transaction is concerned, they are two people. So what you simply do is, Mr. Raymond Ijoma and Mrs. Raymond Ijoma are different parties. When they are signing different columns for signing, then another person entirely should be a witness to the transaction. Then they do the writing. Now, I uh, haven't done that or haven't corrected that. Owning, owning property jointly is is simply owning property jointly. But what you should try to do, you mustn't do, is using a word of severance. If you use they own this property equally, that is no longer a joint tenancy. So Don't that, bother yourself about the complication. Don't bother yourself about this technicality. Yeah. <laughs> Because that's that's that, you, lawyers, you know, doing your thing. Exactly. That that's the role of it. That's, that's that's why you should use a lawyer to a lawyer that knows the So they are lawyers and they are lawyers. <clears throat> now you okay. now you talk that one, not me. Oh. I have had an amazing conversation. I love this. I love, but there's a whole lot of things I'm thinking about in this competition and I feel it's gonna help me in my own marriage everything for everyone who has a you know who are single lady i believe that this, this is even this is even more um more easy for you as a single person so you can prepare for these things before marriage happens you know so um thank you thank you thank you but, um little foxes that spoil the vine if i'm correct so these are things that we don't pay attention to and you will not hear this anywhere you won't hear it you can't even if you google it who will be giving you big <laughs> Let me let me show you. Okay, no need. I, I would have showed you the number of books I I looked into, and and the the prices of those books are. <laughs> God. It's fine. It's fine. Thank you. It's fine. Okay. Thank you. So that's where we are. Thank you.